hello everyone uh, welcome to itech 2020 uh, and our presentation on position sensor offset quantification in pmsm drives via current estimation uh, i am sandan purupu uh, and my colleague yuzo uh, both of us are faculty members at saginaw valley state university uh, and this research was funded by the university through uh, research grant uh, now this is a brief outline uh, but uh, and some introduction here but i want to get into the core of this discussion here uh, so I'll, I'll jump straight ahead to the problem uh, so for permanent magnet synchronous machines as you know a field oriented control is one of the pop popular methods of control uh, regardless of whether you control torque speed or position and in in order to achieve uh, control or achieve optimal field orientation uh, you need to know the rotor position uh, with your rotor having permanent magnets uh, we need to know the alignment of the rotor or at least the angular placement so that the stator flux vector can be placed in an optimal position now in order to measure or in order to uh, identify this alignment or the relative alignment we use position sensors right uh, and those position sensors uh, have an index index that you can that will indicate your zero location or where uh, the position zero is at and uh, this is a mechanically mounted this uh, position sensor is mechanically mounted whether it's an encoder or resolver or a hall sensor uh, and when mounting the sensor you need to be very careful about this index alignment with the rotor zero uh, typically we consider the Q axis to be the zero but uh, as long as you know your uh, Q axis location based on back EMF uh, with respect to the index and you have quantified that that gives you enough information to uh, properly align this sensed position with the rotor zero all right uh, and uh, so th that's a brief overview and in the next slide uh, we will uh, go into a little bit of a uh, in-depth analysis how this alignment will be affected now if when you look at the position sensor uh, when you look at the alignment of the measured position zero which is shown in this green on the first figure you can see that uh, in that first figure your rotor flux vector is aligned with the position zero because mechanically the sensor is mounted that way and the stator flux vector is placed 90 degrees out of out of place because we have an accurate measurement of where the magnets are uh, or what the alignment is uh, of the rotor now in the second case that's also similar uh, but the only difference here is the measured position zero or the index posi position is at a known offset from the rotor flux zero rotor flux vector which can be compensated through software or an algorithm you can correct for it and now you uh, now you can place your state of flux vector at that optimal position which is 90 degrees out of phase uh, to generate optimal torque if you know that's the goal and we are considering here a surface mount magnet uh, pmsm to simplify the analysis if it's an ipm the algorithm or the approach gets a little bit more complicated but we want to have the general approach to have a better understanding uh, now in the third case uh, this is where we are kind of highlighting on the issue the measured position is away is not aligned with the rotor flux vector and the quantified offset is inaccurate and in that case your stator flux vector is no longer at an optimal vector because your theta f is less than 90 which results in a reduction in torque and which we will show with experimental results uh, and this could happen due to many reasons this could happen while the machine is in a system due to vibration shock thermal shock certain you know metals expand uh, and and retract and it could result in an offset or it could uh, if get 
come into picture as uh, as a manufacturing error or a software error whichever the case having such an error will influence your output torque generation and uh, potentially if the error is sufficient uh, for example if it's uh, 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 more than or oh, the error is 90 degrees you could end up not generating torque and in, even worse you could even reverse the torque which could be very ad have adverse effects on the system uh, now in order to uh, verify these concepts and implement our algorithm we use this uh, d space setup it's a dual drive system I, i'm sure most of you have seen this uh, and uh, there is a torque sensor here that we use uh, uh, to measure torque and the machine parameters are given there. Now what we did was in order to study the effect we did conduct some simulations with the same parameters. We induced a position offset error and we tried to see what the effect was on the torque and you can clearly see there is a reduction of torque and we saw the same effect in the experimental setup as well. You can see that we have the we have Q axis current regulated properly uh, because that means the closed loops are working appropriately and it's regulating as expected however because of the misalignment in uh, or misalignment where that flux vector is applied uh, due to the position offset error your to your output torque is reduced even though the controller thinks that it's being properly regulated i mean it's it it is being regulated uh, but what's ultimately happening is the applied voltage gets uh, applied along d and q axis which is not ideal in this case uh, so in order to analyze this effect we actually went into a little bit of control systems analysis so we modeled our field oriented control system using these matrices uh, and then you can see how each variable, you know, it's a vector, uh, the current, the variables are vectors, and then we use matrices to model uh, our system. And the machine also uh, is modeled uh, as a system, assuming, you know, it's in the true frame of reference. Uh, and in order to further analyze, we simplified some of those matrices and we looked at the applied voltage, uh, the transfer function of the voltage with respect to the current references and the back EMF, which you can obtain in the following uh, form. Uh, and then with that, uh, we were able to simplify uh, based on certain assumptions. Uh, we You'll get a very long expression, but if you assume steady state uh, so that the transients are settled in uh, and assuming a non-salient machine, we were able to identify the following relationship uh, for the voltages. And once we substitute those voltages into a machine model or an inverse machine model, we were able to obtain these uh, equations that are shown in, uh, in the blue box. Uh, you can see that uh, you have your estimated IQ and the estimated ID based on the measured voltages uh, are given as here. Uh, so you you see there are, there's a cosine and a sine relationship uh, and in order to extract that relationship out we looked at the error generated by uh, you know by calculating the true IQ or the reference IQ uh, subtracted by the uh, uh, estimated IQ. And there is a very interesting relationship here you can see that uh, your amplitude of that error will vary as a function of speed as well as motor parameters. Okay, and uh, the other uh, interesting relationship here is if you look at the two equations ID error and IQ error, assuming ID reference is zero because it's a non salient machine, they have the same amplitude. They have the same amplitude, uh, and you can also see we have a sign. Uh, negative delta theta by two, uh, so we uh, move, we did some trig manipulations from these equations uh, coming to here, and now when we take the ratio of the two, 
these amplitude terms which are dependent on the parameters and speed cancel out giving us a very uh, nice result that we can use to obtain our induced error the position error that is induced and uh, you can see that uh, this is the relationship that we are going to implement uh, both in the simulation and experimental results. Now here, these are some simulation results using the same uh, platform or the parameters, machine parameters. And we are introducing an error, as you can see in the bottom figure uh, of, of both figures. You can see that we are introducing a position sensor offset error. Uh, and we are also introducing a load transient at t equals 8 seconds to show how much of an influence the load will have on the algorithm. And you can see the two cases. So this is uh, clockwise, this is counterclockwise to show the difference between the two directions of rotations of the error. So estimation error is shown here. Current is regulated as expected, uh, even though we are introducing a position sense offset error. So for the current regulators, they assume or they are thinking the current is being properly regulated. However, the actual torque output is being influenced as we showed earlier. So that can be uh, captured based on these two signals. And we are using the same algorithm that we showed earlier to compute the induced position sense offset error which is shown at that bottom graph uh, and it seems it's tracking uh, along with the, the induced error. Again, these are simulations and you can see that for clockwise and counterclockwise, you are able to uh, theoretically compute them. Uh, and again, we are assuming a linear machine model in this case. We are not considering the nonlinear operation range just yet. Now, these are some experimental results, uh, and I'll show a couple of them at three different load, loads or reference, current references, 1 ampere, 1.5, and 2 ampere. And the results are aligning with uh, what we obtained in both analysis and simulation. The estimate errors are shown here, and based on the estimation errors, the current estimate errors, we can calculate the the position offset error at each speed. And you can see that the in introduced position offset, uh, sensor offset error is shown in red, and the quantified values are following that uh, introduced error very closely. Uh, there is some deviation at the low, uh, low error end because our current measurement have certain error at that, at that point. So that can be uh, an acceptable level. Okay, so this is at 1.5 amperes and we can see again at 2 amperes it is following as uh, we uh, expected. Okay, uh, the IQ error uh, and this should be actually ID error. Yeah, so ID error and IQ error. Uh, this should be ID error and then this is the computed position sensor offset error based on those uh, calc or measured error values. Now, uh, there are final comments that I do have to highlight on here. We are assuming uh, nonlinear operation. We are assuming linear operation, uh, not nonlinear operation. And during nonlinear operation, you may have to modify the algorithm to consider the nonlinearities uh, and compensate them in either in the machine model that you use, the inverse machine model that you use, or uh, as a lookup table. Uh, and parameter variation uh, is going to have some influence if you are trying to detect very small offset error. However, if it's fairly large offset error, uh, it tend not to have that much of an influence. When you are implementing, depending on what type of motor you have, you do need to pay attention to the polarity of the error, whether it's positive or negative, the polarity of the motor rotation, clockwise, counterclockwise, uh, as well as what you define clockwise. Uh, for example, ABC sequence clockwise 
or ABC sequence counterclockwise. All that need to be taken into consideration uh, when you implement this. Uh, the transients, uh, you can see that it, it's not much sensitive to current transients. However, it is somewhat sensitive to speed transients. If you have a lot of noise on your speed signal, you will have to have a filter to avoid any false triggers. Okay, uh, so I hope you enjoyed this talk uh, on uh, position sensor offset error quantification through current estimation. This research is funded by Saginaw Valley State University. Uh, and please uh, let me know if you have any questions or any clarifications needed.